conversation no divorced parent wants to have. Who gets the kids for the holidays? So how do you make co-parenting work during this time? Joining us in the Google Hangout, we have Ariana Fernandez, a divorced mom and a relationship coach in Miami. Erin Childs, a divorced mother and divorce attorney in Fresno, California. Liz Becker, a divorced mother and life transition coach in Miami. And Ed Housewright, a divorced dad and founder of SingleDadHouse.com in Dallas, Texas. Welcome, gang. Thank you. Hi. Well, let's start with Liz. Since you're winding down the holidays, you have been divorced uh, since your son was three. He's now eight. We have a piece here in our in our resource well from the Huffington Post, Solving Holiday Timeshare Dilemmas. How did you solve your holiday timeshare dilemmas? Well, the reality is that we, in my divorce, we agreed on what the sharing was going to be from the get-go, which was pretty much alternating holidays. And uh, the reality is you usually do agree on those facts before, you know, you, the holidays do arrive after your divorce in the better cases. And it's a matter of trial and error because there are going to be times where you may have family members coming into town and you'd really like your child there. So it depends on the relationship you have with your ex-spouse or the other parent of the child to be able to be a little bit flexible. But the alternating holidays really worked on our behalf. But see, sometimes it doesn't always work out that way for some of your clients. They have not so sane divvying up of the holidays. Absolutely. And in that case, there are various things that you can do, actually, because the reality is, is, you know, divorce is all about new traditions. It's about a new life. And that may mean changing the way that you've celebrated the holidays up until now. Uh, you have to learn how to be creative in order to create a great environment for your child and have a positive life ahead if you're dealing with a spouse that doesn't want to work with you on that. And you create your new traditions. You know, you can split holidays. You can, you know, celebrate the holiday on the day after they get back if need be. But there are things that you can do to create these new traditions. And so do you feel that in giving up every other holiday, do you feel that you've sacrificed something? Not at all. You know, at first it's a little bit hard, but... In other areas, you know, when you look at things and when you're trying to cope, as a parent in life, you really, when you're married and you have your children, you dedicate solely on your family. And there's a lot of things that you've always wanted to do in, in your own personal being. And when the time comes that you don't have your child during that holiday, there are things that you can do to keep yourself busy, to be around people that maybe have like family situations, and really enjoy the moments with your other friends and family as well. I mean, it's all in how you're going to take the perspective and how you're going to look at it is going to be the result of your holiday, period. It's not easy. I'm not going to say that it's easy. We all want to have our children over the holidays without a doubt. But in life, you know, you have to make lemonade out of lemons and you have to turn the negative into a positive somehow. That's absolutely true. Ed, you definitely have turned your experience into a great blog, singledadhouse.com. You have primary custody of your children. How do you guys divvy up the holidays? Right. Well, it's, it's been a good situation. We've been divorced for 10 years and uh, we've always shared uh, my son, Connor, our son, on Christmas morning. We live about five minutes apart. And we just have an informal agreement. We never uh, specified it in the divorce decree, which is probably unusual. But uh, he's with me about 80% of the time. And he's always been with me on Christmas Eve night and on Christmas morning first thing. Uh, I have an adult daughter who comes over and the three of us uh, celebrate Christmas and have gifts. And then, say, mid-morning on uh, Christmas, I take him to his mom's. And um, he's there the rest of the day. And it's um, it's worked great. Uh We've been divorced 10 years, so he doesn't really remember, you know, when we're all, all together. So there's no comparison to a happier time, and it's, it's, uh, it's been good. And so do you think that – obviously you've been able to put the differences between your wife and yourself aside for the holidays. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and um, we had a pretty amicable divorce in the first place. Um, I would just recommend if, if you have any uh, issues over custody at the holidays to try to work them out beforehand. I mean, you and the ex alone try to work it out. Uh, don't wait till Christmas morning and have a tug of war with the kid. I mean, it's not fair to them. And um, I think my ex and I have just tried to decide of all the times during the year, Christmas is the time that you, sh you should not fight. And uh, so far, it's working. 
Well, it's a good thing you've got your head on your shoulders. Holidays are a terrible time to start fighting. We have a comment here from BMO. Speaking of mental health and the environment you're raised in, too many kids see and hear the fights during this time of year. Parents need to wise up and be civil during the holidays. Sometimes they aren't. Aaron Childs, you're a divorce lawyer. You're in California. Do you see the holiday spirit sometimes taking a turn for the worse during during uh, the custody drama? Oh, yes, definitely. I mean, divorce is stressful enough, but divorce during the holidays is just in- incredibly stressful. Um, I've been through it myself as a divorce attorney, and what I have found is I think that parents need to look in the distance in about – September, October, they need to really start talking about uh, the holidays and what they're going to do. Either one, you go to court and you get court orders so that at least you have something written down on paper. It's like the referee on paper. So if things go awry, you're protected and you get to ensure that you spend time with your kids or your child during the holidays. But um, if you don't have that luxury, because sometimes people get separated right before the holidays and there's no time to go to court to get those court orders, you really need to try to work things out. So you can try to use like a psychologist or a mental health professional and conjointly meet with this person to help you to work something out during the holidays. Uh, you can draft up your own agreement, put it in writing and submit it with a course. Um, or you can just try to work things out and do the best that you can. One thing I always suggest is that people remember what is most important, and that's their children. Your children should be the center of your universe. And realizing that memories stick, especially around Christmas, those memories really stick with a kid. And when things get really, really tough, focus on giving your child the gift of good memories. So if it means biting your tongue, Um, Working really hard, accepting the unacceptable, but knowing you're giving your child the gift of lack of chaos, lacks of toxicity, um, a lack of fighting during the holidays. You've done a great service to your child. Um, Sometimes I tell people, go make uh, some strategically planned meetings with your own therapist. When you know that exchange day is coming, the time is coming, or those family dinners that are most difficult – Make an appointment with your therapist to kind of cut it off at the pass and deal with it. Now, um, go ahead. Wait, I'm sorry. And were you about to ask her a question? No, I just think that's that's great advice. Uh, parents just need to be adults during the holidays and realize. I would agree with uh, Aaron that th- think back to your fond memories. You wouldn't want to uh, have uh, a, a memories of childhood where your parents fought, and neither should should your kids. Well, Erin, I'm curious, what is your what is your custody arrangement with your ex? Um, you know, I'm really lucky because I have a really nice ex-husband. So we get along pretty well, but there was a time when it was extremely difficult. In fact, we separated, I think, on December 2nd. So it was really, really difficult. So for the first Christmas, and we're both attorneys, uh, we, we, we knew better than to go to court, so we made our own arrangement. What we did finally in our divorce, we have a scheduled time for the holidays. You know, there was one holiday that was more important to me than it was to him, so I get that every year. He gets one holiday every year. We have the referee on paper. But what I've also managed to do and what we've actually both managed to do is – We found a way to connect and to accept each other. We have found a way to get to a point where we don't need our orders, where I'll invite him and his new wife and their new kids over to my house, um, and we do things together, but it's because we found a way back to be civil and to be friendly. He gets to spend more time with our kids. I get to spend more time with our kids, and our children get to be with both of us. So, you know, I would suggest if it's possible, get that Get those orders on paper, but then don't give up there. Keep working on finding a way to be civil with each other again. And that's what I've been able to do with my ex-husband. But I'm lucky. He's a pretty nice guy. I have to ask you, Erin, that first December 2nd, Mm -hmm. did you ever see a future where there could be another lady in your house eating some turkey? Oh, no. (laughs) It was extremely upsetting to me because I, my children are the everything to me. They are the center of my universe. The thought of spending time away from them on Christmas was horrible. It was really horrible, but I had to do it. Another thing that I tell my clients is that I say, 
The holidays are about six weeks long. You're going to live. You're going to survive. You will get through it. Just remember, you got to have a stiff upper lip these six weeks. You got to dig deep, find those resources, be that adult that you need to be. You'll get through it. And I, the first Christmas was really, really tough, but we made it through it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I really something? agree. Oh, with I had to jump right in there. Yeah. Um, no, I was just going to say that I really agree with everybody. Um, and my situation is much more similar to what Liz was sharing, where we alternate every other, uh, every other year, but we actually alternate the 24th for us for Christmas is really big in the Latin community. And we, our goal was that we really wanted to wake up with her on Christmas morning. So we devised a plan. How could both of us have that? So for us, it was every other year. And um, then on Christmas Day, we split the day in half. His parents have a brunch and my family has a lunch dinner. So we get actually best of both worlds and we, we put it on paper and we keep it consistent. I also think that one of the most important things is to keep consistency with children, to make a plan and to stick to it. And of course, uh, as the years go on, I, I'm been divorced seven years also, so it's been quite a while. So flexibility is really important. You know, maybe you want to take a vacation, but take each other into consideration. If you do want to take a vacation, I tell people, um, you know, make it the 26th. It's not going to hurt a couple of days later or the 27th if that falls on your holiday. And um, definitely the beginning is hard. And seeing my three-year-old daughter not wake up with me the first time that it happened or she was four uh, was very tough. But it gets much easier. And as Liz said, you um, you find other things to, to do. You know, you go to parties with adults, which is like, wow, that's an yeah. amazing <laughs> um, yes, yeah. experience. You get to have some adult time. And then you ha get to have that beautiful, magical time when they still believe in Santa. And, you know, for mm -hmm. during Christmas time and you, you're with them. And, you know, so in a way, I think you get the best of both worlds. And I think that if you can really see that and people can understand that and see the you know what's the expression um you know the forest for the trees you know it's there is a light at the end of the tunnel it's it's difficult at first but it does get better and and like i i think it was um ed was saying you know it's for her she was three so it was normal mm -hmm. she doesn't really have any other different experience and she's super lucky she has four houses that she gets presents at you know all yeah. the grandparents are in town uh you know thankfully still with us and you know i tell her all the time she's the luckiest kid in the world you know so yeah, and i think that's a good point posturing the language so that oh too bad for you you can split up into different houses and shovel it around yeah. you get a bunch of presents whether it's hanukkah yeah, whether absolutely. it's christmas you get a whole lot more you know spread when it comes to perhaps getting that gift that you might want but i do have to ask this question i'm curious do you ever have like a little competitive spirit when it comes to presents from, oh, what's their dad going to get them? What's their mom going to get them? Oh, are they spending more? Is that going to make me look like a tightwad or like the Grinch? Um, you know, you, you just have to pick and choose what's important to you. And yeah, I mean, that could happen. Um, but I want happiness. I got divorced to be happy. I didn't get divorced to continually be unhappy. So I have just told myself, you know what, pick and choose your battles, and that's not important. If, if it feels like there's competition, let it go. I want to be happy, and I want my children to be happy. You just have to learn to let it go. Yeah. I think, um, can I say something to that? Because I think that we live in a day and age, of course, that there's an abundance of gifts, and I think the value uh, is diminished a lot in certain priorities that we should teach our children. And I think that the holidays shouldn't be about the gifts. I think it's a great way, yes, to reframe it, in the celebratory fact that they have two homes. And yes, most likely they're going to get double the gifts. But when it comes to the sort of the competition that you're talking about, Nancy, I think if you're a solid single parent teaching your children the proper values and morals, the gifts isn't what's going to make them ultimately happy. It's going to be your disposition. It's going to be your positivity. It's going to be your support. And this is not just during the holidays. It's throughout every day of their life. So I don't think, I think if you take it as competition, you'll probably end up losing. Yeah. But if you look yeah. at it as an opportunity to just really be happy that they're receiving such amazing gifts from their other partner, uh, your ex-partner, if you're not able to afford it, but give them other things that they're going to be happy about. 